This was the scene 22 years ago. Violent, tragic, deadly. Indigenous protesters in a standoff with armed police officers, trying to take back their land from the military. An unarmed protester, Dudley George, shot and killed by an OPP officer. It was a pivotal moment in Canadian history, and many of those protesters have stayed on the land since then. Tonight, I take you behind the barbed wire for an exclusive look at Camp Ipperwash. This land, just about an hour's drive north of London, is very much inhabited. In fact, it has been for hundreds and hundreds of years, originally by the Chippewa and then officially by the Chippewa of Kettle and Stony Point. But 75 years ago, the federal government said it needed this land. It said it needed this land to train the soldiers. In fact, you can see the buildings behind me here. Well, these are actually army barracks. And when the Aboriginal people of this area refused to give it up, well, the government used the War Measures Act to seize it. But there was always a promise that this land would be returned to them and that it would be returned whole and safe. 75 years later, and they've got the land back, but it is anything but safe. The sewage has got to be basically raw sewage probably going into the ground. I don't know whether it's being treated anywhere, just being dumped wherever they're at. And uh, as far as water, they bring water in and they take it out. That's it. They boil it. We have a permanent oil water advisory here. Mike Cloud lives at Camp Ipperwash, surrounded by crumbling buildings, barbed wires, and warnings about the dangerous explosives underground. Relics from when the land was used as an army camp. There's no way in hell I let my little girl wash in, in my building. Don't trust the water. Many of the homes on the former camp aren't even heated, but those who live there won't move. We offered them different accommodations. They said, we're not leaving here. We're never going to leave here because if we leave, they'll come back again. There's a real fear that the government will reclaim the land and even those who were forced off the land 75 years ago fear the military, like Carol Peltier. She says, uh, if you see an airplane or if you see a boat coming in from the lake, she says, you run and hide. Doesn't matter what you see, doesn't matter what you see or what you hear, do not come out. She says, they will kill you. You know, I still have nightmares about, about uh, water and uh, ships coming in. Mike grew up fighting the military, opposing their and, uh, occupation. We would come and fish here until the military would come and tell us we had to leave, we were trespassing. And of course, this is when our dad started educating us real young. He would tell us right straight, you guys, ain't, you're not trespassing, they are the trespassers. Don't ever forget it. He never has. He's lived in war zone-like conditions for more than 20 years because he wants this land, his land, for his people. My entire life been to get our land back since I was a kid. Contaminated land and unexploded grenades and bombs has made the land useless, unusable for traditional practices or new development. Tomorrow, what it's like to live with live grenades just a few feet from your front door.